Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are joining us from. Welcome to today's exciting podcast episode, where we are diving deep into the realm of OTT streaming. My name is Shivashish, and I'll be your host for this insightful session today. And we have got a treat for you. Today, we are going to talk about the evolution of streaming, its phenomenal past, its exciting present, and its hopeful future. Thanks to high quality displays and ever increasing internet speeds, Streaming content has become the new norm. From education to entertainment, streaming has left a long-lasting impact on how we consume content. With 4K TVs giving a cinema experience and the latest AR VRs virtually taking us to our favorite universes, the question is what is the next big thing in streaming? And to answer this question and discuss more about the rich history of OTT, we have with us today Shubham Agarwal, the chief product officer of movie who is going to take us on a streaming journey and shed light on the important events that have shaped the industry and what the future holds welcome to the podcast shubham great to have you on movie on mic thanks a lot thanks a lot shivashish it's really nice to to take this uh, session actually because it also gave me a lot of insights because i, I had to do a lot of research because generally you, you know uh, when people associate streaming with normal things like Netflix, YouTube, etc. But it's really interesting when someone dives deep into the history and uh, the different possibilities of present and also the future. So it was it was re a really great experience uh, working on this. Uh, and thanks a lot for the warm introduction. Uh, well, indeed, in uh, streaming has a very... A uh, big history if we say the technological advancements and everything. So Shubham, let's get started with the discussion. Streaming has definitely left an impact on every individual to some extent. If you can help us with some insights on how it is doing so, it would be great to begin the conversation with. Yeah. Uh, so Shivashish, I think one of the good metric to judge how much impact this streaming has in our day-to-day -day life would be that about 80% of the whole traffic of internet. So basically 80% of whatever is happening on intra internet is related to, or is directly related to streaming only. So, uh, so you can judge if, if a single industry contributes to 80% of the complete internet, it's a big thing. And it's, not like it's a, because it is already so big, so it would be slowing down. It's not like that. This industry is growing at a 20% CAGR. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, the, this is one of those things which I feel it has a lot of impact on every, everyone's life. Today, if I meet a young, uh, three year, four year old kids, they know, a lot when we ask how do you know about these things they would tell that they learned these things from videos only and if you ask someone who is 80 years old uh, and he wants to learn about something then also video or he wants to uh, you know just do time pass or learn about a new skill or even everything everything even i have not seen people watching news on tv they watch news on online so, so yeah, streaming has a lot of impact in everyone's life. And uh, we at Movie have, uh, you know, have this opportunity to uh, to shape how this streaming industry uh, works for everyone. Um, so, so yeah, uh, streaming is really interesting and a lot of, you know, direct impact in, in people's lives. Well, to have an 80% share in anything uh, is quite a big achievement. And uh, maybe that is true to some extent uh, because of uh, the technology that we are able to use. For example, Facebook, uh, when it started, it was mostly text-based. People used to update statuses. Then uh, it was all about images and now everything is all about videos. So uh, social media and to entertainment, to education, it's all about uh, consuming content and then learning. So those were some amazing insights into the world of OTT and seeing how far we have come. I'm sure our audiences would want to know how it started, as in what is the beginning of streaming, if you can explain it to our audience. 
definitely uh, shivashish um so before beginning I, i would also like to you know just have one more fact about the current state of streaming also i missed to mention it earlier approximately there are about 8 billion people in this world and uh, 1.8 billion out of these 8 billion people that is around you know 20 25% um are subscribers to any or of to at least one of the streaming platform so it is a big thing if 20% of the whole world is a subscriber to any product yeah um now coming back to the question of the history of streaming um <clears throat> so um so first of all this you know audio streaming and streaming in general i would say it is really old because you know uh, radio signals etc were there since uh, you know more than 70 years now uh, so i'm not counting that into streaming for now but yes in today's world streaming would include audio as well but what i would focus mainly on is streaming on internet via internet protocol only right and not streaming via uh, radio waves or or any other form of streaming so if we talk about uh, streaming based on the internet then uh, in so the history goes back to as as back as you know about 25 30 years back in about 1995 that is internet was a really new thing at that point of time but even though the internet speeds were really slow people started trying out streaming that period was really the early days of streaming because of the uh, you know uh, constraint with respect to the bandwidth limitation etc you know we used to browse internet at i think 50 or 100 kbps or something really 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 low speeds but still people were experimenting so in 1995 real networks introduced real player and it laid the groundwork for streaming media because you know people need a player also to uh, you know stream uh, video over the internet then in late 1990s and early 2000s you know initial attempts at streaming faced challenges due to slow internet speeds and limited band so people did try but because of the internet speed internet was mainly useful for text based only because even loading images would take time so you can imagine that video would be a sort of a far fetched dream at that point of time that yeah, okay it is possible but it is really slow that was the general consensus because uh, you know video quality was poor and uh, there was a lot of buffering so so till i would say 2000 video over the internet was not a success as such right because you know again as i mentioned the bandwidth but, yeah the bandwidth issues uh, uh mainly the bandwidth issues that people did not have the internet speed to stream videos but in 2005 a remarkable thing happened youtube was founded and and it democratized content creation and consumption on a global scale uh and you would also relate right that in today's world people may consider youtube as a better source of learning than even in the traditional universities or etc so so youtube laid the foundation in 2005 and still we are you know reaping its benefits um interesting fact about youtube would also be that it was initially not a google company google acquired youtube because google saw google was into search engine but they knew the potential of streaming so they acquired youtube because they knew that uh, you know video over internet would be a success and today Uh, i'm not sure about the percentage but yeah a significant contributor to you uh, to google's earnings is uh, you know youtube i think uh, in many parts of the world youtube if you consider youtube as a social network or uh, and then it would be one of the highest so people visit youtube more or people spend time on youtube more than they spend time on other platforms like let's say instagram or whatsapp or any other thing uh in 2007 netflix launched um we all know that uh, <clears throat> you know what changes netflix brought about today uh, you know ever even our entertainment space has been changed by netflix uh, people are making movies for netflix uh, there are new genres of film making new tv series format every every episode you will get all the episodes in one go not like you know weekly one episode so lot of lot of 
cultural shift happened because of Netflix introduced in 2007. And at that point of time also, it was not like that internet was really fast. And it was a bit slow only uh, as compared to today. I mean, I would say maybe about 20-25% of the speed which we get today. Uh, in 2007, we were able to get that. But still, it was good enough. The need was so high that even with a poorer, relatively poorer uh, experience, uh, they became a success. Um, another important milestone, I think, in this streaming journey would be introduction of Adobe Flash Player. It, it was in mid 2000s, you know, uh, it improved video playback and compression, you know, so Adobe Flash actually helped in, you know, in the delivery of video because as we discussed bandwidth issues and uh, all these, you know, high file size issues, uh, streaming, you know, buffering issues. So tech wise improvement. Adobe Flash was a hit. Um, I remember from my early days and, you know, people, all the websites also supported Adobe Flash. People started learning how to create videos on Adobe Flash. Nowadays, it is a uh, <clears throat> it is no more a good technology because, you know, world has moved forward. But yeah, Adobe Flash had a part to play in the, uh, in the evolution. And then, uh, you know, later on, broadband happened advancements in broadband happened you know proliferation of broadband internet accelerated the quality and accessibility of streaming content and then a lot of other advancements then then we had adaptive bitrate stream that is abr you know um because you would see people some people would have a poorer internet connection some would have a better internet connection the same video file needs to be played on both these devices how do you ensure that and abr came into picture you know let's say if you have a, a internet at a lower speed then a lower quality video would be streamed if you have good internet a better video quality would be streamed um you know we introduced uh, protocols like mpeg dash hls um we 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 worked on i mean we as in the industry the whole world worked on things like cdn etc uh and so yeah so a lot of people a lot of hard work came together uh to, to get to us where we are currently. So you talk about uh, the milestone technology advances such as YouTube being founded, which is clearly one of the best video platforms ever and has changed quite a few lives by giving education free of charge, nearly free of charge. And uh, to add this, uh, I also have an insight like Netflix, uh, what you were talking about, uh, when it started, it also had its uh, separate component of DVD rental service. Correct. So before the internet was very fast, even Netflix allowed you to rent DVDs, just like Blockbuster. That was one of the greatest companies at that time, but now it doesn't exist uh, that bad. Correct. So yes, uh, the things that streaming has uh, done and has impacted our life are many. And I assume that various tech uh, technologies like Adobe Flash that you were telling about uh, that that is used in RTMP uh, is no more used because uh, we don't have Adobe Flash players, uh, browser supporting Flash players anymore. So how did these changes impact the user of that time or uh, who are used to watching the pre-scheduled programs on television? Uh, Shivash, can you just repeat the question again? So uh, what I wanted to say, wa say was that uh, there are various technologies like Adobe Flash uh, that has now become obsolete, but it was quite popular during that time. So how did, did these changes impact the user of that time who was initially very used to watching pre-scheduled programs on television, the schedules of which used to come on newspapers like on 12.30, you are going to have that. And how was this transition made from a person who was watching that uh, program TV on TV to be able to stream that same content whenever he wanted to? Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think with respect to Adobe Flash Flip Player, I would say that, um, you know, the evolution of technology from something else to Adobe Flash Player to again something else has little to do with the end customers because it is mainly backend and you know general people would let's say not care that much on which player are they 
viewing or what are the things they require they just want that okay they should work and uh, you know as people uh, created better softwares better protocols you know uh, then this shift is uh, it is normal every every thing every software would need to evolve uh, in order to be relevant right so so yeah so that thing uh, i think people would not care that much about adobe flash player being obsolete and us using other protocols nowadays or other softwares nowadays mm -hmm. now with respect to uh, so this behavior of uh, you know using the remote in tv to browse through different channels and having a pre schedule that okay at 7 o'clock i want to watch this at 6 o'clock i want to watch this i would say the shift has been huge um we do not have the exact data but i'm sure if you look around uh, you will hardly see any people nowadays watching tv per se so they would use tv but they would use it in conjunction with their mobile device like a chromecast or a smart tv or you know they would see things they would view on mobile or laptop on tv they would not go for the traditional solutions of you know using the remote to browse through different channels going one by one you know people want on demand um uh, viewers have transitioned from scheduled programming to on demand content and uh, it has challenged traditional uh, broadcast models by a margin you would see nowadays uh, you know sony group wanting to acquire z group and you know a lot of consolidation happening because business is getting impacted for people who have not uh, improvised with time you know um yes. everyone now has moved uh, to on demand um even traditional channels would be having a presence on mobile apps uh, and they would offer their uh, programs on the mobile app itself right maybe even on youtube uh, they would whenever an episode is released they would release it on youtube or their own app or uh an aggregator as also and uh, so that the user can you know watch at his own preference so so yeah i mean this has also become sort of a um you know nostalgia type of thing so it so the you know the, the decline in the scheduled programming has been such that in few years of time it might even go extinct to a certain extent yes. obviously with uh, sports programs and there are certain things which are scheduled right uh but you know in general viewing behavior of tv series movies etc it has changed by a margin and uh, <clears throat> uh you would see you know even other things even in radio channels radio stations are facing a lot of problem historical lowest revenue for them because people want to have more control over what they are consuming and they do not want to be you know dependent on someone else's choice so so this consumer behavior change because of technology has been huge uh, this on demand thing and then you know mobile streaming has also uh, picked up so i don't think earlier people people would have you know imagined that okay we are moving from smaller screens to bigger screens so let's say in 1995 you would have a smaller tv in 2005 you would have a bigger tv in 2013 you would have a even bigger tv but then in 2020 you will find yourself again going to a very small size a very small form factor in in the form of your mobile phone but uh, you know more than 50% of the streaming would be happening on mobile devices only because it is so accessible you can take it anywhere i think uh, earlier people had the option of getting bored nowadays because of mobile phones and the streaming part uh, there is little scope for people to get bored because it is so accessible right um so so yeah it has accelerated usefulness of phones tvs are primarily now used to stream content from mobile or you know from a fire stick or a chromecast only and uh, you know personalization uh, if let's say you were watching a traditional tv it would broadcast to everyone that same same Uh, tv series or same everything right would be the same across all tvs mm -hmm. but with internet this streaming uh, you know enhancements and this ai so, so generally nowadays we are using generative ai but ai used for personalization for recommendation has been there since 
uh, we have been using it in our daily life since more than i think 10 15 20 years because you would have seen related products on amazon etc also right um mm-hmm. so so yeah so we have been using this and personalization has also you know accelerated this so um <clears throat> you know algorithms are leveraging machine learning and user data is becoming integral in curating personal personalized content experiences and it has enhanced user engagement if you would see the youtube feed of your youtube feed it would be very different from my youtube feed and it could be very different from my my father's or my brother's youtube feed or any other netflix feed or any other streaming common streaming service right um this has led to a, a lot of consumption i mean i would say uh we recently discussed right, that 80% of the whole internet traffic is around streaming. And this personalization factor has a key part to play in it because nowadays my three-year-old daughter also finds relevant content on these streaming platforms for her. So, so everyone gets to have their choice and when you get to have something which you like, then it is bound to increase the consumption. So, so yeah, I would say you know, shift in on demand rise of mobile streaming and these personalization these has been three core uh, you know reasons of changing consumer behavior and factors because of which streaming has become so powerful over the internet uh yes and uh, apart from consumer behavior it has also changed companies and their approach uh, for example the tv service provider like i have a proper connection that lets me watch programmed shows but at the same time uh, that service provider also gives me an application that i can download on my phone and i can watch the same content whenever i want to on the phone streaming so basically they are also trying to combine it and as you rightly said the world is shifting to online content consumption with the rise in smartphone and TV penetration in the market. And data is becoming an integral part for everybody today. So it will not be wrong to say that the data is goldmine of the internet. Uh, and laying emphasis on data, what are the current current trends of streaming? Like what is the present of the streaming industry? Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so regarding current trends, I would give you a more uh you know as in whatever we discussed recently you know uh, this mobile streaming on demand personalization these would also come under the current trends only but mm-hmm. apart from it uh i see a few other major factors also uh which have which are currently you know uh they are upstart i would say in the next two three four years these other things would also become a dominant force so one would be let's say the simply the live streaming part now, from from live sport events to concerts, gaming, and even everyday life event, live stream offers real time engagement and interaction. So, live streaming as a percentage of the content, right? Of the of the content one is consuming, the percentage of live streaming has been increasing. And uh, you know, other metrics which you judge, like the engagement percentage or the repeat percentage or the attendance percentage everything is better for live streaming as compared to a VOD. By VOD, I mean video on demand. That is the um, the uh, recent but older approach, right? So I would say a historical approach would be uh, pre-programmed scheduled content, right? Mm-hmm. And then uh, a relatively newer approach would be VOD, video on demand. That is something which is not pre-scheduled, but it is on demand. Whenever you want to play, you, you can just click on play and play it. Mm-hmm. But a newer thing would be live streaming. That live streaming is also now taking over or not taking over, but yeah, it's CAGR would be higher than the normal VOD industry. And uh, it is true across industries. So when we speak to people in edtech, they would say, for example, if there are 100 students and they, let's say, upload a video and ask students to play that video, let's say out of 100 uh, 50 people play it, right? Let's say a teacher has given homework that, okay, on, on Tuesday you want to, uh, you need to see these videos. 50% of the people will, will see those videos. But if they schedule a live stream, then out of 100, around 85, 90 people uh, go and uh, watch that live stream. 
so the mm-hmm. percentage engagement the per- the attendance rate the everything i mean most of these metrics are better when it came to live streaming so i would consider live stream to be a current trend which is an upstart and who's cagr or who's growth is uh, more than the traditional vod content um i would also say uh, you know these personalized content has been also uh, on the rise so by personalized i would al- al- also mean um niche platforms so generally i mean you what how would you think about youtube youtube is a very horizontal platform right you can find all types of videos yeah, on youtube works for everyone works for everyone right but now you will see uh, even so let's say netflix is also known for normal you know entertainment type uh, industry entertainment videos right but mm-hmm. now you will find people going more hyper local or more personalized in that way so people would create apps and successful businesses over a regional language so let's say in india you uh, you will find people uh, creating successful business for let's say for haryanvi for punjabi for bihari for all these you know different dialects and different for for uh, for horror movies you will find some other platform globally which is doing good uh, so uh, you know adult industry so so a so lot of different industry people are taking and then going deep into it and uh, um business wise um it has been a good value proposition for them because it helps them differentiate from the clutter from the competition as well because you it's very difficult for someone to let's say differentiate between a netflix and an amazon prime video and let's say hulu or hbo or a lot of these things let's approximately similar from uh, uh end users point of view but when we say it okay my platform offers content in let's say it's it offers only sports content it offers only horror content or or it offers only adult content or or anything else so it has become a trend uh, i would say nowadays um so uh, that's right and uh, in fact uh, not just about uh, streaming for entertainment uh, streaming for businesses and uh all these things are also catching up because uh every day we see some uh, like there are some individuals who sell products and they sell it purely on the power of their social media reach so that's uh, that's also where influencer marketing comes into place uh, and influencer marketing is also uh dependent on live streaming so yes the streaming industry uh that we see today is heavily dependent on technology i assume that because uh, to be able to stream content to millions of people where a lot of money is involved and it ha- it has to be time dependent uh, re- should require good technology and uh, bad tech would be definitely rejected by developers as well as end users so what are the essential aspects uh, if we talk about that you think should be a part of a good streaming software both for on demand as well as for live streaming yeah um so so basically streaming i would say is a bit uh, um complicated as compared to other industry other softwares and i am saying this because uh it is so so whenever let's say you are attaching something you are sending anything anywhere right uh mm-hmm. in transferring video would be the most difficult primarily because of its size Yes. Generally, you will find a text doc would be few KBs, images would be few MBs, single digit MBs, two digit MBs. But video file could be one GB, ten GB, you know anything. A uh, lot of different protocols also. Um, uh, in in video, you will find that uh, if I want to send a one GB file to you, then traditionally, historically, you would first download that one GB, and it would take you hours to download that. Maybe in uh, slower internet connections, and then you would play it so very old way. But now, you will not do this, right? You will see that as soon as uh, you get that link, you are able to play, right? You need not download the full one GB file in your system to play that video. Uh, nowadays, uh, you know certain chunks of it gets downloaded. So let's say. Uh, i'm just giving you a very broad stroke 
you know uh, uh, analysis or thesis about this not going into very technical details but you know broadly you can imagine that i am just sending you content which is required for the next 5 seconds okay instead okay. of the whole movie or the whole hour i'll just send you i'll be just 5 seconds ahead of you right hmm. so when you are playing i'll i'm just sending you content in let's say 5 or 10 seconds chunks so that you are able to play the video instantly you know without waiting for hours to download the complete video so so lot of things also so i'm just highlighting that video is a bit different from other uh, formats available on, over the internet and uh, because uh, it is the most engaging form of uh, uh, you know content out there because it has a uh, visual element a moving visual element that is a video not a static picture uh, it is also you are able to hear it so it has voice sound also so sound plus image so it is very engaging uh, the uh, the best form of content uh, currently is video in future it is changing i'll discuss about it uh, a bit later but yeah people need to figure out uh, multiple things uh, how would you store those videos so you would want something because let's say if you want to build an ott software you would need to okay, i'm not talking about the production of video so you will obviously need someone to have create that video file right so let's say considering you have that ready you would need some place where in you can go and upload that video right so let's say two three people are going so you need some sort of cms on admin panel where in you will log in and you know upload that video add metadata posters etc everything over there then generally a video would be a single video but you know that right uh, whenever i'm giving example of youtube because it is very common right uh, so it would give you option like 240p 7 480p 720p 1080p right hd quality so a lot of options are also available now how do they do it because one needs to convert a video file to encode a video file in different formats in different bit rates etc they also need to reduce the file size so let's say if you have uploaded a 10 gb file if we Uh, deliver the same file to the end user it is not going to work because even though internet speeds have increased but not to this extent right so one needs to compress that video file and not like a normal compression then they need to compress it in multiple formats to to cater to different type of internet speeds uh, different technologies right uh, someone would just need a link to play it someone would also need the file to play it um so encoding transcoding then security that you would want that okay people should not screen record my video this video should only be available in these countries and it should not be available in these countries uh you would want things like you know subtitle support mul- option to choose multiple languages then one would also need key ticket should work on ios devices on android devices on web so <clears throat> so lot of things so i'm i'm not trying to scare you it's just the reality of streaming right and that is why i, I also think that um movie was really important because if one needs to do all these things and 100 things more uh it would be a very time taking process it would be very costly it would be it would not be an ideal situation it will take you a lot of time uh i think since movie has sort of democratized this that within within 2 minutes you are able to get all of these things ready at a very low price also i think it is a game changer and uh, it has enabled lot of people to actually explore this industry without having to bear the brunt of the technicalities involved yeah Okay, so the streaming industry is huge. Uh, given everyone is creating content, and movie, uh, has a lot of products that can help people give the get the software backup that they need in order to stream properly. So, but every big thing, uh, has its own challenges. So, my next question to you would be: What are the current streaming challenges? that you think people are facing or will be facing too 
um so i would say that these challenges would also be opportunities right because whenever there's a challenge it means that there's an opportunity to make money because if there's a challenge it, the challenge would be for everyone and the one who is able to overcome that challenge would be having some sort of a offering for which people would be paying right it would be an opportunity also so uh nowadays industry wise i would say that content monetization is one part of it um as the streaming market grows increasingly competitive you know finding effective monetization strategies be beyond subscription models becomes vital you know so you know balancing ad supported content pay per view or hybrid models requires you know innovative approaches so this needs so people are also working on it so um you know historically you would see that uh, Uh, subscription models came into picture right that okay pay x amount per month and you'll get access to everything um based on country that for some countries this was a good approach uh, let's say companies with higher per capita income companies with a bit lower per capita income they were facing challenges in selling subscription models so you know people are trying that okay can we introduce ad supported model for ott also um can we introduce beyond the subscription or ad supported can we have certain titles as pay per view right that okay uh, to access this movie you will have to pay this much amount or maybe a hybrid model right um you will see some platforms trying out that okay in free plan you will be able to access content but let's say it would be heavily ad supported uh, so a lot of ads in between but let's say if you are paying x amount then ads will be gone and you'll be able to access everything uh, there are also some people who are saying that okay without uh, buying a subscription you are not able to access anything you have to buy a subscription to watch the content they are keeping the pricing low but then for their premium titles they are charging extra so it is over and beyond the normal subscription fees so uh, so this is one area content monetization where currently or people are you know experimenting different strategies and one i think needs to come up with uh, innovative approaches on how to go about monetization right uh, people are you know coming up with different uh, small small hacks or tricks also that okay they will bundle many things so there are nowadays aggregators also right so they are aggregating four or five different platforms and selling a lump sum uh, fee a uh, lump sum amount people are par partnering with uh, isps internet service providers that okay if you have airtel or you if you have anything then okay these these two services comes bundled with it because you know in this industry is also very interesting because the gross margins would be very high um, so let's say if you are buying a, an iphone the cost of manufacturing would be uh, uh, a good enough part of the price you are paying that right? let's say 30 40% would go into the spare parts or the parts which uh, goes into manufacturing an iphone but with this uh, internet based businesses like streaming business whenever a new customer is added the cost does not go up that much because uh, it is just the bandwidth cost etc which is very very low right as compared to other costs so i would say that even the gross margins would be upwards of 95% so so people are coming up with ways on how okay, how how can i get more customers uh, so people would be selling let's say even one year subscription would be uh, 500 uh, uh, rupees or one month would be 400 rupees so so trying out ways on how to convert people to a yearly subscription so yeah monetization is a big uh, challenge and an opportunity for many um uh, Uh, working on it devising some innovative approach can be very helpful and uh, the second thing would be uh, these technological advancements you know so <clears throat> uh, keeping pace with these tech advancements is also an ongoing challenge uh, embracing new tech like immersive experience vr ar enhancing streaming quality like 4k 8k optimizing for emerging devices and ensuring that one is staying ahead in the streaming race it is it is a challenge because people are or the industry is moving really fast uh, every 
every few months you will see that a new codec has come a new um uh, you know people are following new standards better standards uh, how to uh, you know get things done faster as in uh, with lower bandwidth people are should be able to consume better content or let's say you know reducing the size or of the video file or reducing the cost which you incur because of encoding process or the uh, storage which the company pays you know because of uh, of the tech so <clears throat> i think this is also a challenge and opportunity because speed is really high so if let's say you one has a tech team it's not about that okay starting an ott business is just about creating an app and adding content it is not that in streaming that uh, creating app is the uh, is will solve the problems because streaming protocols are changing so you would need to also do work in the back end not just like the front end ki app you create an app and it's done you have to do a lot of work in the video processing part uh, which is a challenge and also an opportunity um uh so let's say at movie we are uh, our hypothesis or our thesis is that uh, why should every company has to do all these things separately so let's say if you want to support airplay company a will also do work to you know support that company b will also do company c will also do so our thesis is that okay let's let us be the leader in this space you know let us uh work towards having the uh, most advanced tech out there and then make it available to everyone so that the playing field is level now you do not one does not need hundreds of high paying engineers to match the quality of netflix it okay. is not possible for a normal person but yeah at movie we are able to do it because uh, we are doing it on behalf of all of our clients okay so uh, we don't need like hundreds of high paying engineers so how does movie do it like can you elaborate a little bit like just another minute to explain uh, in short how movie gives you the best platform Correct. yeah so it is more like that um uh let's say talk about encoding right so now mm-hmm. you want to support dolby atmos or anything then you will need some engineers to let's say work for a few weeks or months to uh, do that right and uh, that is just one part uh, there are hundreds of things similar to it which are happening parallelly right so you would need hundreds of engineers traditionally you would need hundreds of engineers to do that even movie requires hundreds of engineers to do that it's not like that we have cracked some core wherein we do not need to do that much effort okay. it is just that movie is spending that much effort on your behalf now one if you need to if you want to start a new ott business or a streaming business we are saying that okay why would you want to repeat the same work right which we have done for you so we have a 10 plus year history right we have been developing uh, these streaming software since 10 plus years so i would say millions of hours have been already spent by movie developers yes in order to give a good streaming experience now since tech or technology is such that it is incremental right it is it becomes better day by day when we work on it so mm-hmm. the logic is very simple that uh, it requires hundreds of engineers movie has already put in thousands of engineers we are all also currently also uh you know putting in thousands of hours of effort to make the platform better day by day so that our clients do not need to do that and since we are a platform provider we are a platform behind your platform right yes. so so we can afford to do it um so yeah it is i would say in business terms it would be similar to something like economies of scale that um which mm-hmm. we want to make the same tech available for everyone uh and not just limited to only the rich few yes uh, and building upon that uh, what shubham said our platform if you want to uh, make your first ott platform our plans start at us dollar 399 a month and we also give a free trial so you can just uh, go into our website which is www.movie.com and start creating your first ott platform yourself now 
coming back to the future uh, based on our conversation here shubham what i assume is if i start going to my office i can watch a cricket match on my phone when i'm traveling on on the metro when i reach my office i can watch the same game on my laptop and eventually when i come back home i can stream that entire game on a 55 inch big screen that's where the technology has evolved it has allowed us to consume content whenever we want wherever we want and at what uh whatever capacities that we wish to do it so the next question and the last one for today is what does the future of streaming hold for everybody yeah <clears throat> so i'm personally very uh, excited about the future as such because i can uh, you know see things which are currently not mainstream but i feel that uh, uh i can you know currently also touch and feel it sort of because the mvps of these future tech is already available so whatever i am talking going to talk about it's not like it is in the far future okay some day you will have flying cars or it's not like that it is more like it is the future is already here it is just that it is not mainstream yet right but in the next 2 to 4 years uh five years you would see these tech becoming mainstream and uh, people using it uh, non challenge like theek hai it's a common thing right it, it is expected um uh, so so one thing here would be uh, uh, you know these uh, advent of ai or impact of ai in uh, streaming so uh, so i would say in terms of production you know earlier what happened let's say if there's a, there is a movie then one would need to hire one would need if let's say if there's an english movie and you want to watch it in hindi that producer will need to you know dub it in hindi they will need to hire voice artist etc uh, not many movies also got dubbed only a handful of movies got dubbed so you know getting reach to your content is and was a problem you know but in the future or the late, with latest trend it is more going towards you know automatic translation automatic captioning uh, so let's say if uh, if brad pitt has a movie and then even currently one can you know translate that movie in hindi keeping the voice of brad pitt same so one would not need a new voice for brad pitt in hindi which is currently the case but you will be able to you know hear the same voice of brad pitt but as if he's talking in hindi uh, or any other language right uh, so in terms of production i think uh, this is a huge step and this is the future wherein uh, distribution of content is becoming easier for people because uh, this language barrier is being broken down by ai um you know writing subtitles captioning is or was a problem with ai it is uh, getting solved right uh, you, if you have the video file you can get the captions ready for in let's say 100 languages in a few hours similarly uh, uh, translation of text and audio that is uh, taking uh, shape uh, even ai video creation so ai video creation is a more nascent stage is that more nascent stage currently you'll just find 8 10 second videos um but yeah it is also uh picking up and uh, <clears throat> uh maybe in a few in a one two three years time you will see ai creating helping you in creating videos also you know uh creating editing videos so i think one thing is this uh, regarding impact of ai in streaming that is going to be huge uh very confident i'm very confident about the translation part uh, regarding ai video creation etc one needs to see how it happens how much ai is able to do it uh, other thing would be uh, ar vr for uh, uh, for streaming uh, because you know previously in this uh, talk itself i said that um, video is the best form of uh, currently content out there right because it has audio it has video it has moving pictures also you know so it uh, in a way it is better than just audio or just text or just images 
it is the it was the most engaging form of video until this ar vr uh, came into picture recently you would have seen that uh, give me a minute huh? <clears throat> <clears throat> yes. So recently you would have seen uh, Apple Vision Pro, right? Yes. Um, so it is not like that. It is the first AR headset. Uh, uh, Facebook, Meta, uh, Quest, etc. So people have been trying in this direction. Uh, Vision Pro is a step towards it. And uh, yeah, within a, within a year or within two years, uh, if let's say we are able to improvise on the hardware front, uh, you will see these tech becoming mainstream and uh, it will be again a game changer because uh, I think in the last 5-10 years you would see a lot of news reports coming that okay, these OTT is eating into uh, movie industry, right? Uh, it is eating into the theater business, uh, theaters yeah. are getting shut because of this, you know? or the market is, has stopped growing for them. Um, with this AR, VR, this trend is all, only going to increase because nowadays with uh, with these tech, you, you can also replicate the feeling of uh, theater. That is the big screen feeling, right? Uh, uh, so uh, it is able to provide you with that kind of experience wherein you are not limited with the form factor of your mobile. Okay, you have a small mobile phone or a TV, 50, 70 inch TV. You will be able to uh, basically visualize a movie in a much, much bigger format. Uh, you can, uh, it is also going interactive some ways. You will see people are trying, okay, how can I, can we gamify the video also? Uh, there you will see some innovative people, you know, um, making uh, these content such a way that as a viewer, you also have a choice that, okay, what do you want the protagonist to do? Should he, should she do X or should she do Y? And based on your choice, the next thing happens. So like Bandersnatch, there is a movie on Netflix. That correct. Like Bandersnatch. So, uh, so there, there have been three, four things. So, so that was not AR VR per se, but with AR, we are these gamification sort of things, wherein it also takes into account your surroundings. And uh, let's say if you are watching a movie it, and there's rain in it, uh, basically it can convert the whole atmosphere, at least for you, the perception can be that you are in a rainy uh, place, right? Not just like a screen, but more like an experience also. So, so these things are also uh, picking up. These are relatively nascent stages. These gamification of videos uh, involving games inside videos, uh, having bigger screens because of these AR, VR. Uh, so, so yeah, I would say these two things, that is AI power translation, etc., and these AR, VR are the future. Um, and obviously there are other things which I've not mentioned but which are uh, shaping in uh, uh, these the, these this stream, streaming industry, like you know AI powered personalization. That uh, in future, uh, I mean the AI algorithms are getting better day by day. So uh, people currently you will find people saying that okay, uh, are these uh, devices able to read my thoughts also? I, I was just thinking about this and it is now it in my feed of YouTube or for Netflix. So, so these AI tools are also becoming more intelligent day by day. Uh, so more personalization in that sense, you know, uh, hybrid monetization models, uh, maybe people will come up with more newer approaches to monetizing content, right? Uh, uh, I mean, people are already trying that, okay, for subscriber, this is some content which is exclusively premium to this. Okay, so our premium subscribers will get content two days earlier as compared to other people. Or they will get an opportunity to meet with us or maybe there is a community that uh, uh, helps you engage with the creators as well. You know? uh, so and these so, similar thing like chat, etc., so in TV, one cannot chat with the uh, with the TV provider, right? With with the channels, but with 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 mobile, etc., it is possible. So so these things are also 
uh, picking up and obviously the uh, the tech advancement which we spoke about the reasons because of which adobe Fl flash player got deprecated those reasons are still there because uh, whatever tech tools we are using currently uh, in couple of year times most of them will be replaced uh, better codecs will come uh, better streaming will come better encoding will come better audio quality better compression everything so yeah these are the major things wherein i think that uh, the the streaming industry is moving towards okay thank you so much shubham uh, for this insightful session uh, the future definitely looks wonderful and as someone who has spent so much time in the industry and being the chief product officer of movie a software company that specializes in these streaming products what do you think will be the contribution of movie in helping creators maximize their reach and build great platforms and if you can give a message to our uh, listeners who are looking out for such softwares that they can use to build their own online streaming platform for their various industries yeah so um i genuinely feel uh, that uh, a better solution for anyone uh, looking to start a business or to expand the business in online streaming space would be to go with some service provider because if one tries to build everything from scratch a it is very costly because you know one would require so many engineers to do the work otherwise the quality would be very poor so so the cost factor then the quality factor that even even though if you have 50 100 200 good developers to work on it but still it is not for sure that the quality would be good because they are just 50 100 engineers uh, but you know other major platforms like which are common which are b2c famous like netflix etc they have also uh, you know deployed thousands of engineers over a decade more than a decade to get to a point where they are currently uh, other players are also doing it so uh, i would say even with 100 engineers the quality aspect could be weak uh, so, so the cost the quality the time to go live if one wants to start this and they want to build the software from scratch it would take months and months if not years to get to a point okay, it is a good enough platform to release there are a lot of uh, and it's not just uh, one platform now it is lots of platforms you would want to work on web on uh, tablets on mobile on android on ios on android tv on apple tv on samsung tv on roku tv uh, apple vision plus a lot of uh, devices also so it is a bit challenging so i mean genuinely it is really difficult uh, if one wants to do everything right uh, so i think going going with a uh, with a service provider is a better is a better option uh, when one wants to start their uh, streaming business um, it could be movie or it could be anyone else also but uh, i would suggest you to go with uh, some provider because it will give you great tech at lower prices and at very fast rate that is instantaneously or within a few days or hours one would be able to start the business so so one suggestion would be that uh, that to go with some provider instead of doing everything uh, oneself um and even when someone is going with a provider it is also because at movie also we have you know so many different products like six plus products because because there are nuances to streaming it it is not people associate that okay streaming means netflix or streaming means youtube it is not the case there are so many nuances that if you want to create a platform like netflix or youtube you will go with movie one right which will give you a ready made app in in a in a, in a few minutes uh, you can also try we have a free trial also one can also try within without paying anything without paying zero with zero rupees you will be having your own app in your hand with your content which is a great thing right um, then one if you want wants to have a platform around live then movie live is another solution if one does not want to have these mobile apps but they want to have a software to host all the videos to share uh, 
ऑन वेबसाइट एटसेट्रा टू एम्बेड इट है ना uh for internal team communication etc so then movie flex is the solution because one does not want an android app per se they do not want to start a business like netflix but they have some other use case so then movie flex is a better use case let's say if you want to start an iptv 24/7 ch- channel also right um then movie playout is the solution which lets you create not vod but like a traditional 24/7 iptv sort of thing but, continuously one after the other uh, shows will you know go on uh, even in that area we did not discuss in this meeting but that area has also evolved it's not like the tv uh, tv just the same it's not the same experience it is much better because you get tv guide you can also record the older uh, shows and you know you can set alarms for it so a lot of things so so movie playout is a different software for that aspect let's say if you want to have uh you want to have these streaming solutions in places like uh, let's say aeroplane or uh, or train or bus or cruise you know where in internet availability is broken then but you want to have some entertainment solution then movie offline is a separate offering um if you are a developer and you do not want these uh other solutions like hosting etc you just want a player then we also offer player sdk so so this streaming also has a lot of nuances so when choosing about a a, a service provider or a product then uh, the customer will have to do some research uh on what which tool suits uh, the best for them right which is the best suited tool for them so so yeah so that would be my uh, broad level suggestions uh thank you shub shubham for shedding light on the incredible capabilities of movie and its long list of products and also for taking us on a journey of streaming technology its advancements and the fascinating future that it holds it was great talking to you and i'm sure listening to this a lot of our listeners will be inclined to try movies offerings that they can do by simply going to our website and opting for a free 14 day trial and that's it for this episode of movie on mike for more such podcasts make sure that you subscribe to movie on mike and see you next time with another interesting episode till then have a great day thank you thank you shivashish thanks a lot Thank you.